today on Corporal's Corner. We're making stinging nettle cordage, so stick around. In previous recon video, we discussed how to identify and prepare stinging nettle. However, we did not discuss how to make cordage from that material. So what I'll do right now is a quick recap for those of you that missed that video and show you how to identify stinging nettle, and then we'll get into the cordage making process. Stinging nettle are found all over North America, especially in open areas along rivers, lakes, and streams. These mini hypodermics inject antigenic proteins and formic acid, causing pain and blistering. Now the stinging nettle that I just showed you is the perfect size and age if you're going to go ahead and prepare it and eat it. Now for cordage making, you want the older mature stalks. And if you look back over here, you got one right here, here's another one, here's another one. It kind of blends in with the environment so you have to know what you're looking for. So I'll go ahead and I'll zoom in on these right now and give you material identification. These older stalks, you can see the needle hairs on there. And they're kind of a dull gray purple color. A little bit of brown in there. Now to harvest these, all you gotta do is just take your knife and cut it towards the base. Now using a pair of gloves or a bandana, what you want to do is you want to remove all the hairs on the shaft. Now you can save these leaves and prepare them and eat them at a later time, or you can just discard them. Now what you want to do is you want to separate the fibers from the shaft or the stalk, and there's a couple ways you can do that. One is you can tap on it gently sometimes that actually destroys the fibers. So another option would be to get a stick and roll it. You can hear it crunching. It's actually separating the fibers. Now you can start separating it. Now once you've gotten it to this stage right here, 
what I found that's easiest is go ahead and break the ends off. This allows you to peel the fibers away. Now that you separated your fibers, what you want to do is find the halfway point and go ahead and pinch it with your index finger and thumb like so. And what I do is I drop one end over. So this kind of resembles a number nine. And I'm going to pinch that with my index finger and thumb. Just like so. Now you got a vertical and a horizontal. Now what you want to do is you want to take your other hand, your index finger and thumb, and you want to twist that one away from your body until it's nice and tight. Then you want to grab your middle finger onto your vertical and pinch it between your index finger and twist it towards you. Now repeat the process. Twist it away. Grab it, twist towards you. And the tighter you wrap this, the better it's going to look. So far, so good. Now for one of the most commonly asked questions. Once we get to this point, what do we do? How do we add on to it? Well, if you've done this properly, you should be able to set it down, and it will not unravel. And if you notice, you still have a vertical and a horizontal. So taking your other fibers, and hopefully you have more. Just repeat the process you started with. Find the midway point. About right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert this up inside here. And then I'll move these down to a vertical. And those become my horizontal. Now I'll pinch it all together. And we'll continue the process. And you can see where the splice is, it should be thicker. And that's actually good because it adds something called tensile strength. And it should be stronger at the splice. Now this is not a lot of cordage, now, if I took some time I could probably make it a couple more feet, but there's a test that I want to perform on this. And that's 10 pounds right there, bounced up and down. So can this hold a 10 pound animal? Most likely.
you all enjoyed this quarters making process. So with that, I'll catch you all next time.